how to live in the experience of Pentecost. Happy Pentecost, everybody. Today we are celebrating the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit upon the Church of Jesus Christ. It happened during the Jewish festival of Pentecost as the first Christians prayed together. They had this amazing supernatural experience of something like a, a violent wind blowing in the meeting place where they were. And then something like flames of fire appearing over each person's head. And then they found themselves filled with this powerful, awesome presence of God with the result that they praised and proclaimed God in all sorts of different languages by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, which then turned to this great big evangelistic meeting and the result of all that was 3,000 new believers. Wow, what a day, what a beginning, what power and love and joy they all had. But you know, Pentecost is not just a historical event to celebrate. It's also an inheritance to experience. And lots of church leaders have said that during this pandemic lockdown, God is preparing us for a new lease of life. You know, just like those first Christians, we are locked away, waiting uh, for the Spirit to come, as it were. And we are waiting in this time of lockdown for God to come and renew us so that we can go out and speak, speak of the good news and win people for Jesus. Well, you know, there's so much I could say today uh, about that reading from the book of Acts. But instead, I want to focus on the reading from John and look at some of the practical steps we can take to experience the power of Pentecost in our own lives. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and proclaimed in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Let's have a think about those few verses. Four practical steps for experiencing the power of Pentecost in our own lives. Thirst. Thirst for more. That's my first point today. Let anyone who is thirsty, Jesus said. And the starting place for growth in the Christian life is desire. Now, of course, God sometimes sovereignly moves in a person's life in a dramatic way when they were least expecting it. But usually, God waits for us to respond to his call on our lives. He waits for us to come to him. And so thirst is very important in the Christian life if we want to grow. The person who's not too bothered whether or not they are filled with the Holy Spirit who shrugs his or her shoulders and, and kind of says, whatever, like a, like a bored teenager, that person is unlikely to experience the deep things of God. But the person who is really thirsty, really hungry, really desperate for more of God in their life, that person will be willing to do anything to get close to God. And it's that attitude that makes such a difference. Now, during this time of lockdown, some of us have felt that kind of yearning and longing to be with family or friends and have gone to great lengths to make possible, uh, to make it possible for us to meet with them. Now, I saw this picture on Facebook that this week of what one person had arranged in order to hug her children. Have a look at this. Yeah, what do you think of that? Uh, what are you prepared to do, I wonder, in order to get closer to God? What time are you willing to put in? What sacrifices are you prepared to make? How much are you willing to clean up your life in order to be close to God? Now, perhaps all this talk of being thirsty sounds a little strange to you. In the spiritual life, it's difficult to know what you're missing. 
uh, until you've tasted of it. For me, I was greatly helped as a, a brand new Christian by reading a book called When the Spirit Comes by a vicar. It's a true story of a vicar called Colin Urquhart uh, in the 1970s whose life had been transformed by an experience of God's Holy Spirit. And suddenly there was this new joy, uh, this new and powerful peace, this um, amazing miracles were happening in his life. And I read that book and I thought, wow, that's amazing. I had no idea the Christian life was going to be like this. I want that reality in me. And that, that desire uh, has never left me. That book, in a sense, set the direction of my life of thirsting for God, experiencing more of him, thirsting for more of him, and then experiencing more thirst and more thirst and more. So if you find it hard to identify with that feeling of thirsting for more of God, then what I do, what I would suggest you do is, first of all, read the book of Acts in the Bible and see what the first Christians were able to do by God's power. Read the life stories also of people who've been filled with God's spirit, spirit and church history is full of them. Read about all the amazing things that they did and all the amazing things they saw and experienced and see if that doesn't awaken in you a deep thirst for God to do the same for you. That's my first point, thirst for more of God. Secondly, come to Jesus. Jesus says, if anyone is thirsty, let them come to me. So we thirst for more of God, then we come to Jesus. Now John, the gospel writer, tells us that Jesus made this statement, this promise, on the last and greatest day of the festival of tabernacles. And on this great religious occasion, the Jewish believers would gather at the pool of Siloam in Jerusalem. And the high priest would fill a golden flagon with water from the pool. And then there would be a grand procession to the Jewish temple where the water would be poured out on the altar as an offering to God. When they did this, the Jewish believers were looking forward to the spiritual water that's promised in their scriptures, our Old Testament. The waters of blessing, the waters of new life that would come when the Messiah arrived. So Jesus is saying, when he stands up and proclaims, come to me, he's saying, well, the time has arrived. Your Messiah is here. Come to me. And Jesus says that to each of us today. Come to me. Now, to come to Jesus means, at the same time, to come away from all the wrong things we've done in our lives, the wrong way of life that we've previously had. We'll have to give up some of our old ways in order to take hold of the new life, the new way of life that Jesus intends for us. And the Bible word for this is repentance. And I want to give you a little illustration to help you understand how this works. So here is a teapot. If you want to fill the teapot, with water from the kettle, then first of all, of course, you've got to take off the lid. Otherwise the water can't get in. But secondly, we might need to take out anything that's in the teapot. Now in here, we've got various bits of paper and uh, a toy soldier and some elastic bands and an old soggy tea bag and goodness me, all sorts of things. But if we get rid of this rubbish, then there's space for fresh, clean, boiling water to be poured inside. And if we want to come to Jesus and be filled with the Holy Spirit, then we firstly have to take off the lids, as it were, from our lives by being open to God and coming to him in prayer. But secondly, we need to make room for his presence by clearing out the rubbish in our hearts and minds. Now, of course, we're never going to be perfect this side of heaven, but that's, that's not what I'm saying. What we can do is thoroughly confess our sins, ask God to forgive us, and then choose to give ourselves completely to him. We can say, 
Lord, I'm yours. I give my life to you, 100%. Please fill me with your spirit. That's what we need to do. That's how we can come to Jesus. Personally, I find it helpful to sit down in a quiet place with a piece of paper and to write a list of all the areas of my life where I know I'm not living as God wants me to. My thought life, my relationships, my time, my habits, my fears, my doubts, and so on. And then to kneel down and to work through that list in prayer, confessing my sins, asking God to forgive me, and then opening my life afresh to him. If we do that, it really does empty your teapot. Thirdly, drink of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. How do we drink from God? Drinking is a picture language for spending time with God in prayer and asking for more of his presence to come into us. Before the day of Pentecost, the disciples were praying together constantly, and then God's power and presence came upon them. And both the Lord Jesus and the Apostle Paul stress the importance of asking for more of the Holy Spirit, even though we may already have experienced much of his presence. Jesus said, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And then the Apostle Paul writes, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the Spirit. Asking, drinking. It's a simple idea, but do we actually do it? Ask God for more of his Spirit in your life. Ask him to fill you with his presence and pray it every day. Pray it every time you are aware of your need. And sometimes set aside specific times to pray long and deeply for more. More, Lord, more of you in more of me. For 2,000 years, Christian history is full of stories of people who have done just this. And we should read them so that we get excited about what is possible for us. Let me tell you just one story. In the 1800s, there was an evangelist called Dwight L. Moody, D.L. Moody, he tends to be known as, and he wrote this, I began to cry as never before for a greater blessing from God. The hunger increased. I really felt I did not want to live any longer. I kept on crying all the time that God would fill me with his spirit. Well, one day, oh, what a day, he writes. I cannot describe it. I seldom refer to it. It is almost too sacred an experience to name. I can only say God revealed himself to me and I had such an experience of his love that I had to ask God to stay his hand. I went to preaching again, Moody says. The sermons were not different. I did not present new truths, and yet hundreds were converted. Now, we might not have the same level of experience or the same kind of experience that Moody had, but we can all have experiences of the Holy Spirit. But we do need to ask, we do need to drink from the presence of God. Fourthly, believe and trust. Believe and trust that he is filling you. Jesus said, whoever believes in me, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And the Apostle Paul writes elsewhere, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
You know, sometimes when you pray, things happen in your experience and you know that God has given you more of his spirit. You may be filled with peace. You may feel surrounded by divine love. You may sense electricity flowing through your body. You may burst into joyful tears or profound holy laughter. But sometimes when you pray, perhaps often when you pray, you don't really feel any different at the time. What should you do when that happens? Well, Jesus promised that the Father would give us the Spirit if we asked him. And having sincerely asked him, we should simply trust that God has answered our prayers and given us a fresh impartation of the Spirit. Even though we may not see the evidence immediately, we should trust him. We should believe in him. And we should say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. And believe that we will see the evidence as we go out into the world as representatives of Jesus. You know, much of the Christian life consists of believing what God has said and then going out and doing what he's told us to, trusting that he'll be with us. I learned this for myself as a, as a young Christian. And I know I've told this story a few times, but it's such a good illustration of this principle. I wanted to have an experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit, like the ones we read in the Bible. But I prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing ever seemed to happen to me. Then one day I went to a large evangelistic meeting. It was in a big marquee near Bradford University, led by a Pentecostal minister. And I explained to him my problem of always asking and never, it seemed to me, uh, receiving. So he prayed for me. And then he told me to raise my hands and to close my eyes and to simply thank and praise God over and over again. And so that's what I did. And at some point in that time of thanks and praise, it suddenly felt like a bolt of electricity ran through my body, from my head, through to my toes. And I knew then that I had been filled with the Holy Spirit. But when did that happen? When did the experience come? It came after I'd believed, after I'd believed I'd received and not before. And so asking and believing are like two sides of the same coin. We should always ask for more of the Holy Spirit and we should always believe that we've already received in some measure the Spirit in our lives and be thankful for what we've received. And because we are thankful for what we have of God, then his presence often becomes more manifest and more real in our lives. Well, in conclusion, I hope, well, I hope firstly you've enjoyed this little tour of our building and that's encouraged you to see our building once again. But I hope what I've said to you has brought encouragement to your heart. There is much that we can do to put ourselves in the place, spiritually speaking, where God can fill us again and again and again in new and deeper ways with his presence. We need to thirst for more, come to Jesus, drink of him in prayer and trust his promises, believe in him. And of course, I haven't even mentioned the regular means of grace that God has given to us, reading and meditating on the Bible, worshipping God, fellowshipping with other Christians, receiving Holy Communion, and so on. All these are very helpful and very important as we pray for more of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let me finish, though, with that wonderful promise from Jesus. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, says Jesus, and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Let's pray.